Hello and welcome to Access Sportsnet Lakers. I'm your host, Chris McGee. Joining me, the Laker Insider, Mike Bresnan from The Athletic, Andy Kamenetsky. Hi, Andy. Hey, how you doing, Geeter? I'm doing great, fellas. The NBA season openers tomorrow. Yeah, can't believe it. Dubs, Unreal. Brooklyn, KD, Kyrie together, Lakers, Clippers. What that else do you season, want? Andy? That offseason felt like this big. It, it went quickly. Unbelievable. Stoked. I'm just excited to see this, man. I mean, I know it feels like we just played big time meaningful basketball because we did, but we are about to get a really good kickoff for the Lakers, man. This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And uh, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, they're locked up long term, so that makes Laker fans real happy. And the Lakers just added another name to that list. Kyle Kuzma agreed to a three-year, $40 million contract extension with the Lake Show. The deal keeps him with the Lakers through the 2022-23 season with a player option in the 2023-24 season. Lakers GM Rob Polinka in a press release had this to say about Kuzma's deal. It is especially gratifying for our Laker franchise to draft, develop, and now sign one of our own to a contract extension. Kyle has shown tremendous growth over the last three years and played a crucial ro role on last season's championship team. Kyle has been a terrific member of the Lakers community, and we're all very excited about his continued future with us. After practice on Monday, Kuzma broke down why he decided to do this move before the season started. You know, I was kind of really up in the air. You know, I wasn't too bent to really try to get something done um, unless it was just the right situation. Um, you know, it's never always about the money. You know, I'm, I'm still so young um, in the game of basketball to where um, I have opportunities for that, but it's all about um, just the situation. And um, we, got, we got a great situation. I personally couldn't be more excited that, uh, you know, we got Kuz uh, into a, contra a contract extension. Uh, he'll be with us for years to come. And, um, you know, I just love what the young man represents. You know, he he's one of our hardest workers. Uh, he's a team first guy. He's, he's sacrificed, you know, in, in many ways uh, to help us win a championship. He's willing to do the same again. And, um, you know, he's the kind of player that, that we want here with LA Lakers, you know, on the floor, you know, as someone that's versatile offensively, uh, is a two-way player that impacts the game on both ends and, um, you know, has that, that desire to win at a high level. So he's a big part of last year's championship and, uh, you know, he's a huge part of, uh, of what we hope to do this year as well. Yeah, I mean, it's good for him. Uh, you don't have that, you know, contract anxiety for the whole year. You know, now that it's out the way, he can go out there and play. Um, and which which he was doing anyway, you know he was having a great you know preseason and he even played great for us uh, in a bubble um, and all last year. So um, you know he he's he's locked in. He's making he made a great jump on both ends of the floor. Uh, he wants to take those matchups. He wanted to guard Book in the preseason. He wants to guard Kawhi in the preseason. So uh, and Paul. So he he wants those matchups. He he's playing extremely well for us on the offensive end, uh, making the big shots. Uh, you know, shooting the ball extremely well, making the right play, the right passes. Um, so it's, it's good for him. You know, we're excited to have him here. Uh, you know, I know he's excited to be here. Um, and he's a champion. You know, you deserve it. And I'm glad um, that the Lakers were able to, you know, work something out with him to, to be able to allow him to just go out there and play and not worry about contracts for the rest of the season. Being in a situation to have my family be set for life and, um, you know, to be from Flint, Michigan, where you know, it's a really impoverished place, and um, now I can just do a little bit of uh, a little more good back home as well. So, um, you know, it feels good. LeBron James giving a shout out to young Kuz on Instagram saying, Yes, sir, Kuz, congrats, bro. Wine Chronicles on you next time. And then Kuz responds with a bottle of wine saying, Is this a good start, Brez, our <laughs> wine connoisseur? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Listen, a lot of expectations. Um, on Kuzma from Laker fans. He's playing alongside two of the best guys in the league, two Hall of Famers. I'm happy for Kuz, happy for the Lakers. Three years, 40 is a great deal, Brez, for both sides. Absolutely. Especially today, you're seeing big numbers around the league for guys that aren't in Kuz's league. Yeah, there's some role players out there that have signed deals for like 15, 16 million a year going forward. Very equitable for both sides. Love this deal. I mean, if you look at... Uh, when
when this extension starts next year, Kuz will be making about 12 and a half million. The average salary in the NBA is going to be about 10, 10 and a half million. So, yeah, it's a good deal for Kuz. He's, he's got some money. He can opt out for that third year if, he's, uh, if he wants to try the market again. And I think what it means, you're going to see the Lakers like this for the next few years. What you see is what you get. Uh, LeBron tied up long term, AD as well. Kuz, no doubt about it. And uh, not a lot of free agent money next year, probably a mini mid-level. But, hey, it, it's, it's a pretty good nucleus with those three right now. AK? Hey, I love the way it gives flexibility for both sides of this. With the Lakers, they know they've got a guy like Kuzma locked in for the next couple of years. They're looking for him to really develop consistently the type of two-way prowess that they've seen in spurts, but never on a regular basis. But now I think Kuzma cannot be concerned about whether or not his role is going to lead to better, you know, a better contract, that sort of thing. It gives them more flexibility, to be perfectly frank, if they ever wanted to try to move him because the team that would be taking him on knows exactly what he'll be getting paid for the next few years. And it also gives Kuzma flexibility if he actually out, outplays this deal. He's not going to be on it very long because he's got that third-year player option. Mm -hmm. I just think this works really well for both sides. And I also think it's great, too, as Rob Palinka noted, that they're rewarding one of their own. And I don't think it's an accident that they made sure people knew that. It reminds me a little bit, it's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, but with what the Lakers did towards the end of Kobe's career with that extension, you know, just projecting the idea of players that mean something to us, we're going to make sure we take care of them. And I, and I think that's a big part of it with Kuz. Prez, you got into the numbers a little bit. What does this mean moving forward? Yeah, it, it means the Lakers are going to be over the, the cap. Uh, they're going to be able to sign someone next year for about, you know, $5 million uh, for, for a year. They're not going to have a ton of money. But, but you have good players. You have uh, LeBron here for, for three more years. You have AD here for five more years. Uh, Schroeder will be a free agent in a year. The Lakers like what they see. They can go over the salary cap to re-sign their own. You know, it's the start of a very strong team with, with, which is under contractual obligations for several years. Uh, and I like what they, what they did here with Coops. Like AK said, they, they drafted this guy and now they're going to extend him. It's kind of like what they did with, um, and, and there you see the numbers right there, 12.3, just a little bit above what the average salary will be for, for an NBA player that year. But going back to what I was saying, the Lakers gave Jordan Clarkson four years and $50 million a few years ago. This is kind of similar to that. So, you know, it's one year less, but they like to reward these guys that they draft in the second round or late in the first round. They develop them. You know, big uh, kudos to Jesse Buss and the Lakers scouting department for grabbing coups that late in the first round. And also kudos to Rob Palenka and the rest of the Laker organization for stepping up and doing this, like I said, very equitable deal for both sides. Yeah, happy for Coos, his mom, yeah. of course, who's, yeah. uh, you know, yes. a huge fan. And we always don't follow her and put her on the show or tweets and stuff. So very happy for them from Flint, Michigan. So congratulations, Coos. Frank Vogel said this week that he's uh, keeping his starting lineup close to the vest uh, with Dennis Schroeder resting. Here is what they went with in the final preseason game. LeBron, KCP. Kuz, Anthony Davis, and Mark Gasol. I think everyone just assumes Schroeder's going to slide into that spot. Kuz will come off the bench with Harrell, Caruso, and you know, as deep as the Lakers are, we talk a lot about it. Okay, I want to get a lineup from you guys. AK, I'm going to start with you. This is not your starting lineup. This is not your closing lineup. This is your favorite lineup that you want to see, your favorite combination. Give it to him. Well, I'm really intrigued right now to see what I think will be the second unit. Mm -hmm. And I got to disagree with you, Geeter. I think Dennis Schroeder ultimately is going to end up coming off the bench more because I think that's best for the Lakers. AC, Markeith Morris, Montrez Harrell. And then I'm going to shoot the moon here with THT. Ooh. But I think you also could potentially, you could potentially see Wes Matthews there, potentially Kuzma. But what matters here is that this second unit gels and plays really well together because when you take into account the context of this season, how long it stretched out and then how short the offseason was, the mileage on LeBron and the way last season, the Lakers often cratered whenever LeBron was off the floor, not even for that long. And also, you know, Anthony Davis carried a pretty big burden last season as well. It is crucial that you can put a second unit out there that forget you know, just matching buckets can actually build leads. I think it's going to make it the easiest way to allow LeBron and AD to recharge from last season. So this second unit is really critical. I really want to see what it looks like. Quickly, AK, I don't disagree that Schroeder might be better for this team coming off the bench, but do you agree that he's probably going to start? How long into the season do you think 
until he goes off the bench. I, I, I hope that if the Lakers ultimately think that that's what's best for the team, that he comes off the bench, they just do it right away. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, you might as well just hit the ground running with this. Schroeder's going to play big minutes, and I think what matters most is if he, if he actually closes games. But I just think it makes more sense for him to be coming off the bench. Either way, I think he's going to be playing a ton of minutes with that second unit. All right, Prez, we know how deep this team is. Is there a combination, maybe a favorite lineup of yours early on that you want to see? Yeah, it's kind of like the one we showed earlier, the starting lineup from that uh, last preseason game. I'd probably sub uh, Schroeder in there for KCP. I like guys that can score and, and shoot. I think you get this with pretty much all these guys, guys who are not afraid to put the, the ball in the air. Uh, Marcus Saul, kind of the, the straw that stirs the drink as far as a post player who likes setting up his guys. Uh, all these guys have range. All these guys can put 20 up in a game. Maybe not Marcus Saul anymore. He only averaged about eight points last season in, in Toronto. But I, I just like the fact that he can uh, really extend the offense out beyond the uh, three-point line and also get a few nice assists like we saw a lot during the preseason. I think it'll change from time to time. Do you guys have an odd man out? Like that 11th guy, Markeith Morris, THT. I mean, remember Markeith last year, then all of a sudden he was a, a big-time mm -hmm. uh, player in the playoffs. It might be THT. I mean, I mean, and, and good yeah. for him for showing us what he did, what he could do in the preseason. Not a lot of run for him in that fourth and final preseason game. He's still a young guy. He's still yeah. one of the youngest guys 20. in the entire league, right? Yeah. And, you know, I think Frank Vogel might say, okay, we know what we have with him. Let's let the vets kind of kind of marinate on this season, try to get it back-to-back. -back. And as the season goes, he yeah. finds a way to get him in. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if there were such thing as seeding games again this year, I think we'd see a lot of THT in those. Or if the Lakers kind of run away with the West, and, and then you throw THT in, in some of the meaningless games. Press sounded really smart, uh, smart AK, so we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> and, and, and we're going to go to Brad. I don't want you to ruin it for First him, time ever. All right. <laughs> still to come. Uh, it might not have counted, but there were plenty of highlights from the Lakers in their